South America is known for being a continent home to some of the highest levels of biodiversity on Earth. From the various species of insects, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals, all sorts of creatures call this part of the world home. And yet even despite this assortment of life on the continent, there still exists a strange omission when it comes to its native animal life. This comes in the form of hoofed mammals. Beyond its tapirs, camels, and selection of deer, South America pales in comparison to other continents such as Asia and Africa when it comes to this department. But South America wasn't always like this. Not too long ago, this continent was teeming with ungulates of all shapes and sizes, far removed from the ones that currently inhabit this continent. These animals were grouped together into the clade Meridiungulata. Meridiungulata is a class with a great history of research and discovery. However, it's also one that's still very much poorly understood. In this video, I want to try and uncover some of the mysteries behind this clade by going over its main families, as well as how Meridiungulates are related to other groups of animals. There are six main families that I intend to go over today. These are Nodoungulata, Astrapatheria, Pyrotheria, Xenungulata, Lidopterna, and Didolodontidae. Despite being clumped together into one grouping, the actual families of Meridiungulata aren't all closely related. Lidopterms and Didolodontids in particular don't share much in common with the other four families according to molecular research and are usually grouped together on their own. Nodoungulata is the largest of all the families of Meridiungulata first appearing in the Paleocene and lasting until the early Holocene, this family is also the longest lasting as well. Notoungulates are composed of two main groups, those being Toxodontia and Typotheria. Toxodontia is a suborder that contains several different ungulates, many of which resembled hippos or rhinos in appearance. Toxodon, perhaps the most famous of all notoungulates, could be found in this grouping. At over 1400 kilograms, this animal is one of the heaviest of all the meridiungulates. This creature was also notable for being discovered by Charles Darwin during his explorations into the continent. In addition to Toxodon, other genera such as Leontinia looked even more similar to rhinos as they likely possessed a horn. One genus of Toxodontia, Trigodon, while also having a single horn, was unique in where it was placed, around the center of its forehead. Not all members of Toxodontia looked like rhinoceroses, however. There was Rhynchippus, which converged on the horse body plan, and Hamalodotherium even bore striking similarities to the horse relatives known as Calicotheres. Even pigs found analogues in Toxodontia, with Thomas Huxleya not only looking quite similar to pigs or peccaries, but also apparently sharing their omnivorous diet as well. The diversity only continued in the second branch of Nodoungulata, Typotheria. This branch was home to an even more highly diverse set of body plans and behaviors. There were some that were small and rat-like in appearance such as the Middle Eocene Camponorco. Others resembled rabbits like Interotheres and Hagetotheres, with one genus of the latter grouping, Pachyrucos, possessing incisors very similar to those of Lagomorphs. Some members of Typotheria such as the Interotheres Myocochilius looked like a small sheep or antelope, although this particular animal was thought to be oddly insectivorous. In addition to this, there were the Archaeohyracids, which resembled hyraxes, as well as Mesotheridae, which looked like moles and also shared their behavior of digging into the ground. Astrapotheria represents the second family of Meridiungulata, and while this group wasn't nearly as diverse as Notoungulata, they were arguably more widespread. Astrapotheres were known to be larger animals with a stocky, tapir-like build. Astrapotherium is the best known member of its family, and bears an uncanny likeness to tapirs and even elephants. Just like elephants, it's thought that its recessed nasal cavity was evidence of it having a trunk. A close relative of Astrapotherium, Antarctodon was notable for having lived as far south as Antarctica, although the continent during the Eocene when it was alive was not nearly as cold as it was today. Pyrotheria is an even smaller family, but it shares many of the morphological traits of the Astrapotheres. This included animals such as Pyrotherium having an appearance very similar to that of an elephant, from a trunk to tusks of a large size. Pyrotheres were found to be so similar to elephants in fact, that researchers in South America believe them to be ancestral to elephants, although there's little evidence to back these claims up. Xenungulata is another small family in Meridiungulata, and one that was extremely short-lived, lasting only from the late Paleocene to the early Eocene. Its best-known member, Charadnia, was thought to have been the ancestor to the Pyrotheres, but others simply listed as part of a sister lineage. Others still link it as being closely related to other groups such as Dinocerata. Lidopterna, like Nodoungulata, was notable for having been around a considerable amount of time, from the Paleocene all the way until the end of the Pleistocene. It was a family of animals that resembled ungulates from other parts of the world, and these animals thrived in grasslands such as those in Patagonia. The most famous of all Lidopterns was Macrocania. It looked like a llama in appearance, but also had a proboscis. 
These animals were among the heavier creatures on the continent at the time, being over 1,000 kilograms. You might have also recognized Macrocania as being one of the background animals in the first Ice Age movie. Prototheridae was a group in Lidupterna that strayed away from the camelid appearance and instead converged on horses. These animals were known to be even more adapted to running on one toe, with genera such as Thoetherium having even less traces of its other two toes than in the modern day horse. Didolodontidae is the last family of Meridiangulata and one of the oldest as well, first appearing in the early Paleocene or even as far back as the late Cretaceous. These small, dog-sized animals have been argued to be the progenitors of all ungulates, but have also been seen as being close relatives of the lit-up terms. The phylogeny of the South American ungulates has always been a subject steeped in deep mystery. As mentioned before, some scientists such as Carlos and Florentino Amagino saw them as being ancestral to almost all other groups of placental mammals. Others took a more reserved approach, and the most popular view today is that all meridiungulates are fairly isolated in their taxonomic grouping. However, a recent study by Avia and Mothe in July 5th, 2021 aims to try and link these disparate groups to other mammal clades. The researchers used teeth and mandibles from available fossils, as well as the most basal taxa of paleogene lineages to conduct their study. Some of the results they found mirrored those from prior studies. For example, they indicated that Meridiungulata is not a monophyletic, naturally clustered group. As well as this, they showed that Lidupterna and Didolodontidae were indeed more closely related and were grouped together in Panamariungulata. The other families were grouped together in the order Sudamericungulata and shared a common ancestor with Hyraxes. These two groups made up a separate African and South American lineage and could have diverged as early as the early Paleocene. The Panamariungulates could have arrived in South America through a small chain of islands from North America during this age, and from there saw themselves isolated from Laurasia theria, with which they were thought to be a part of for the rest of the Cenozoic. Meanwhile, the Sudamericungulates could have performed a similar method of island hopping from Africa to South America around the same time, where they would have diverged from the Afrotherians they were closely related to. It's interesting to note that this theory has also been attributed to how New World monkeys first appeared in South America, as well as how Xenarthrins like sloths and anteaters eventually evolved in this continent after splitting from a larger Atlantogenadin order. There are certainly many attractive features of this study. For one, it managed to cleanly link together a swath of mammal groups in a way that would make sense given where they were during the Cenozoic. As a bonus, it also managed to give more reasoning as to why astrapotheres and pyrotheres oftentimes look so similar to elephants. That being said, there are some problems with this study. For one, it was primarily driven by morphological characteristics. The problem with that is that it doesn't necessarily account for convergent features. For example, it makes sense to link lit up turnit to Laurasia theories like Perissodactyls given their similar foot morphology. However, without proper genetic data, these links are still pretty tenuous. Meridiungulata survived all throughout the Cenozoic, but different families saw their extinction at various points of the era. Xenungulata went extinct shortly after the start of the early Eocene. Their extinction could have been likely caused by the end of the Paleocene Global Maximum and the gradual cooling that followed. Didolodontidae and Pyrotheria both went extinct in the Oligocene, with the onset of grasslands at the end of the epoch and more global cooling. Astrapotheria went extinct in the later Miocene, and their extinction could be linked to the decline of wetlands which they were known to occupy, as well as the increase in forests throughout South America. Lidupterna and Notoungulata survived the latest of all other groups, with the former going extinct in the late Pleistocene and the latter going extinct in the early Holocene. There are numerous reasons as to why these groups managed to go extinct given their particular time frame that they disappeared in. One reason could be the onset of new herbivore competitors that came from North America after the Isthmus of Panama formed and connected the two continents at the end of the Pliocene. Species of horses, deer, elephant, and other proboscideans could have been intense rivals for the native ungulates. Another reason could have been linked to the more general megafaunal mass extinction at the end of the Pleistocene. This could have been caused by the arrival of humans, climate change, or some combination of these and various other factors. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more animal related content in the future. I want to give a big shout out to all the commenters who requested I make this video on my last upload. I also want to give a big thanks to Caviramus09. He was the one who linked me to the study that made up the bulk of the phylogeny section. He also provided me with a lot of other resources as well. I just want to remind everybody that this channel wouldn't be possible without the help of viewers such as you guys both supporting me and giving me video ideas. If you have a new idea for a video I should make, please make sure to leave a comment below telling me what you want me to cover in the future.